Hey y'all, I'm Stacy. And I'm Tom with RV Texas, y'all. Welcome back. Today we're on the Texas Gulf Coast at a longtime favorite for a lot of folks, Galveston Island State Park. And this is early summer 2019. And in midsummer 2019, the beachside camping is going to be closed down for what they're saying up to three years. Yeah, they're going to be doing some major renovations, basically an entire rework from what we understand of the beach camping area, including more sites and some upgraded features. So we're excited to see what they're going to do yeah. with it. But yeah, the estimate is three years. So you're looking at what is that 2022 yeah so we want to show you all the fun that can you can have on the bay side of galveston island state park which is where we always stay when we come yeah so stick around as we show you around the bay side of galveston island state park <laughs> Okay, uh, we're gonna take you through the RV loop. There's one RV loop, one camping loop for tents only. Uh, the RV loop has 20 slots, and I think the, the tent camping has 10. So we'll kind of take you through these two and kind of show you. And the RV loop is 30 and 50 amp. They're all back in and they have water and there's no sewer connections but there's a dump station right around the corner right around the corner so let's let's take a look our site right on the wall yep we have a water site as a lot of them right here are all of them on this side Stars enjoying those booties. As you can see, they a unique thing here is your campfire sites are all kind of shared on the inside of the loop. And they have some barbecue grills on the inside as well. These aren't on the outside, so you don't have fire pits at your campsite, but you can come in and do a fire on the inside. And then there's a little, I guess, just covered seating area here. Yeah, little pavilion. You do have a picnic table at your site, but there's more in here if you want shade and maybe around the barbecue pits. So just past the Bayside RV loop is, uh, if you continue down the road, it dead ends to an area where they've just put in a new uh, kayak launch. They were working on this last time we were here. There was a launch here, but they just redid all this boardwalk. And that takes you to one of their paddling trails. There's maps that show you the different paddling trails. And, and then there's a fish cleaning station over here as well.
So what's nice about this, you can park right here and then just walk across the boardwalk. Just a little shaded sitting area. This is nice. I never knew this was here. So as you can see, campsites 40 through 49, this is the camping loop for tent camping only. And we'll take you through, this is where the bathrooms and showers are too. So if you're staying in the RV loop and you wanna use the bathrooms or showers, you have to come to the uh, tent camping loop. So let's take you in. Size. Yeah, it looks like they all have water. They have a picnic table with a little shade structure. They have a fire pit and a lantern hook. And you can park right at your site. That's super nice. And some of these look like they're waterfront also. Yeah, I just took a peek inside the ladies' room, and they are really, really nice. Probably been replaced here not long ago, probably after Hurricane Ike in 2008, is my guess. Really nice, very clean. The showers have a private dressing area for each one. Uh, yeah, super, super nice state park bathrooms. So there's a road that goes the length of the park here on the bay side. And it's nice, what they've done is they've mowed all along the, both sides a nice shoulder so you don't have to walk in the road. You've got room to walk on the sides of both sides of the road. So you don't have to worry about the traffic coming up behind you. Not a bad view either. Not a bad view. Okay. 
so this is another kayak launching area. Um, again, it shows the paddling map on here. And earlier today, when we were coming back from our kayaking, there was a huge group here. Uh, a lot. I think the park must have had some kind of paddling thing this morning. Yep, you can put right on in. What do you think, Star? I wanted to see if she would go in, but no, she stopped at the end of the pier. Uh, she is not a water dog. She is not a fan of water. Getting the star some water. Yeah. Keeping her hydrated. That's a pretty cool container, too. Yeah, it is. We got that at the uh, Austin RV show one year. An RVer. Uh, was selling, she goes around selling neat pup yeah, and cat stuff. she was a full-time RVer too. That's right, that's yeah, right. Works the show. She and this works, living. works great. Keeps her, her water cool enough for her and she loves it. Well, I think we're going to leave this trail for another day. Uh, looks like it's a little... Little fool, we need to bring the kayaks back and maybe go down the trail in the kayaks. <laughs> We'd have a little more luck. <laughs> I bet all the birds are over there. Yep, that's where all the birds probably are. We just met Tom and Mary. Hey y'all, thanks for stopping us. <laughs> yeah, that was neat. They managed to snag a beachfront site. And uh, that was good to get to meet them and their pup, Rusty. Yeah. Star wanted to play though. So this is the Clapper Rail Trail head, trailhead, and it uh, goes to an overlook just right over here. And it's a half mile long if you take the whole trail, and then it also connects to other trails. Uh, we'd like to do uh, a connection to get over to the bigger. Uh, overlook, but it looks like all that's underwater right now, and it feels like there's a storm blowing in. We're getting some dark clouds and the wind's picking up, so I think we're just going to maybe go to this first overlook and then start walking back because we're a little ways from the RV at this point, and we didn't bring the waterproof camera. <laughs> so they did a planned burn through here a little bit ago and it's neat to see all the green already coming back in. They do that every so often to kind of help with the soil and I'm not sure exactly what all it does but it's supposed to be good for the land. I'm gonna have to look that up. Been doing a lot of restoration work out here lately trying to restore the ecosystem <clears throat> after damage from storms and things like that and I think over the next few years this park's gonna look a lot different my gosh it says the wetlands began to disappear here in the late 1800s Sea levels rose and began to gradually flood marshes and choke out native plants. Between 1985 and 95, intense groundwater removal by nearby refineries caused the land to subside or sink. This substance, substance began to have a significant effect on the health of the wetlands. By the late 1990s, only 100 acres of marsh remained in the park. Wow. The most successful habitat restoration projects take advantage of nature's ability to heal itself. Since the 1990s, a number of restoration
be a washout today. It was supposed to rain all day. So yeah. don't always base your trips on the weatherman. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> Look at this, choppy water yeah. oh, over here, and then calm. calm on this side because wow. the bridge breaks it. Look at that. That is something, isn't it? <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen that. Choppy. So I mentioned a while ago that I needed to do some research on why they do prescribed burns and well, they have a sign for that. So that worked out great. They did a prescribed burn here March 28th, 2019. Now to give you some sense, uh, we're in May of 2019. So a lot of greenery has already come up just in the last, uh, really just a little over a month. Uh, but basically they do it because this was normally grasslands and naturally wildfires would come through this area every one to three years to kind of do a natural cleaning of the area and keep the shrubs from getting too big so that the grasses could grow and it could support its normal environment as well as returning nutrients to the soil. So every so often they come through and they do a prescribed burn uh, with very careful planning and, and everything in place to make sure that it's only in the areas they want it to be to bring the area back to its natural uh, look, basically. The, the normal grasslands that would be here if it were just for nature itself. They burned 675 acres in March of 2019 here in the park. This is the area that we just saw there. Earlier, quite a few people were fishing over here. So, and most of the times when we come to this park, people are fishing here. It's like a day use area. And it has barbecue grills and it actually comes with a bathroom over there. <laughs> Not fancy accommodations, but it's nice to have something. <laughs> okay, we qualify. <laughs> On leash. On leash. <laughs> <laughs> and she's good. She won't even get out of the RV now without having her leash on her. She will sit in the door on the steps and just wait for us. Yeah, she is. She's good. Thanks for joining us in this visit to Galveston Island State Park. We'll see you next time. Safe travels. And happy camping. Bye. Bye.